Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Russell Moore. I am in charge of community outreach here at the Hornet, amongst other things. I think we have a really special program for you today. I hope you're all going to uh, be moved by it. Uh, we're going to start today with the national anthem. So if you would all rise for the national anthem. to start us off with a quick prayer. Yeah. If you will pardon me just a moment as I stand in front of this plane As I used to sit in the third seat back before taking the caliper shot to go off to another place to deliver a message when we were deployed. And the pilot would call up and said, Chaplain, are you strapped in? And I would say, mm -hmm. <laughs> What I was saying, you're breaking up my prayer <laughs> and hope that we make it off the end which is the beginning of the flight may we pray I will not doubt though all my ships and planes are at sea may come drifting home with broken masts and sails and propellers but I'll still believe the hand which never failed from working good for me and thee. And though I weep because those sails and the planes are battered, and some never coming home, still I will cry when my best hopes lie shattered. I will never doubt that all my prayers will be answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Uh, now I'm going to introduce Mark Epperson, the CEO of the Hornet Museum, for a few remarks. Thanks, Russ. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Epperson, the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the USS Hornet uh, Museum, and I want to express my heartfelt appreciation to you for attending this memorial ceremony for our shipmates who are lost at sea while serving their country. Most special welcome to the families of that crew who have graciously agreed to attend the ceremony. All who serve or who have served on the Hornet our shipmates, and we are connected with that special bond that links the past with the present. This is our legacy. This has been a labor of love. <laughs> now it's better. This has been a labor of love for the crew members of the Hornet. I want to specifically recognize our Aircraft Restoration Division, Rick Tom, Tim Hampton, George Rutellis, 
for their generous donation of their time, treasure, and talent, as well as our other crew members who assisted throughout the year. I can think of no more a fitting place than the Hangar Bay of the USS Hornet to dedicate the S2 tracker in their honor and which will serve as a reminder of their sacrifice. Thank you. So I want to quickly go through the story uh, of this aircraft. Uh, not everybody here might be aware of the full story. So as Mark alluded to, the museum's air volunteer group restored this uh, S2 tracker as a memorial to the four-man crew of anti-submarine squadron uh, BS-35. During the Vietnam War, the USS Hornet conducted anti-submarine warfare operations in Southeast Asia. They also assisted in search and rescue operations for drowned pilots. On January 22nd, 1966, William S. Foreman, Edmund H. Frenier, Robert S. Sennett, and Irwin B. Templin Jr. took off from the flight deck of the USS Hornet in an S-2 tracker and never returned. This restored aircraft was delivered to the U.S. Navy in 1959 and flew until 1982. In 1986, it was sold to a private collector and flown at air shows for many years. In the year 2000, the aircraft was donated to the Hornet Museum, and the air group volunteers have been working on it ever since. And they have restored it to the identical markings of the plane that was lost as discussed in 1966. So with that, I'd like to introduce Rick Tom, who's the CEO of the USS Hornet. Thank you, Russ, and welcome aboard. As many of us know, the, the story of a POW and MIA goes a long ways. But it wasn't until the 1970s when the POW and MIA movement actually started. It was started by a woman by the name of Mary Helen Hoff. She lives in Jacksonville, Florida, and her husband was lost uh, flying with a squadron uh, off of the, uh, in, over Laos, I'm sorry, over Laos. She is basically the artist who helped create the POW flag that we all know POWMI flag that we all know today. I, was, I did not get the chance to actually meet her, but I, ha I have worked very closely with her daughter and her son in a new effort today in forming the National Memorial for the POW and MIA personnel in Jacksonville, Florida. It is a great honor to be here today and do this, uh, this event. I've been on the Hornet now for a little over 20 years. We've always kind of wondered what we're going to do with this airplane and how we're going to display it. It wasn't until about five years ago that I came up with an idea. Let's uh, actually uh, throw a tribute to these four gentlemen, shipmates of ours. And we had posters around the ship, tribute to Skip, Mike Ray. Uh, so I sat down with our air group and this is the air group right here. We sat down and we discussed it. They were all in it for it. So we decided at that time we're gonna go ahead and replicate that specific air, aircraft, and that was five years ago. And now here we are today, exactly 56 years to the day that we lost this crew. This is a, a very uh, moving tribute for all of us. We have family members here and hoping that we can all have some point of closure, and that's what we're looking for. As I have been quoted many times, and that is, we've all lost loved ones, but few of us have experienced the loss of a loved one who has not returned. And this is our part of today. We want these names not to be forgotten at all. The Air Group has worked very hard uh, through this whole restoration process. It was also the help and the leadership and the contributions of Ponderosa Paints in Fresno, California, who helped us with the paint products for not only this aircraft, but the aircraft that you see around you. Without them, we could not have completed such a great job on these aircraft. This is all aircraft grade uh, covering paint. 
So uh, we really take our hats off to Ponderosa Paints out of Fresno. At this time, I would like all of you to know that indeed, as a veteran, we all gave some, but some gave all. And that's why we're here today, is to honor these four shipmates of ours. Exactly 56 years ago to the day, those four crew members took their last steps on this earth on the very decks of this ship. So that right there is a movie tribute within itself. Gentlemen. I will be reading off the names of the crew and at the conclusion of the name you will hear the ship's bell. This is the original ship's bell of the Hornet cast in 1943 when this ship was commissioned. After that, you, we will then expose the name of the crewman on the airplane where they were actually assigned to sit during that last mission. Lieutenant Commander William S. Foreman. Airframes, Master Chief, Edmund H. Frenier. <laughs> Aviation Machinist Mate, Senior Chief, Robert R. Sennett. Lieutenant Commander, Edwin B. Templeton, Jr. Yeah. To the families, these names will remain on the air. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to introduce two more people that really were an integral part of this project. Tim Hampton, who's a CEO advisory council member, naval historian, and a Hornet volunteer, and George Rutalis, filmmaker and Hornet, Rutala, uh, Hornet volunteer. Sorry, uh, George, you want to come up here? Hello, welcome. I'd like to present this film that we produced for the families.
Rick Tom alluded to, there's a famous poster in the Naval Aviation community that is out there in the wild. And I'd like to recognize the artist of this poster who also flew the S-35, Lieutenant Mike Ray. Please raise your hand. Mike Ray captured here in a painting he did in 1984 was remember his crewman who didn't return. And it wasn't for his help in creating this, he kept their stories alive. And many of us know about this poster, and I've seen it floating around at the tail hook in Reno, and it really was kind of like a blueprint for bringing this aircraft alive that you see here today. So with that, I'd like to thank you. The rest of the ceremony, we're actually going to move to the fantail in the back. We're going to be taking the wreath out there. Uh, for those of you in the audience, there's a table that has individual flowers, so feel free to pick one up on your way back, and you can uh, toss your own flower off the back of the ship if you'd like. So, uh, air crew, and you can just follow after the wreath bearers all the way back to the fantail at the back of the ship.